Now, while I love the Road Trek kitchen, the fridge needs a little help. The fins in the back of the fridge get super cold and that coolness is supposed to disperse throughout the fridge, but there's nothing to mechanically move that coolness. So now the way to combat this is with a fan. Now this is a fan I found in one of my old computers. I thought it would be enough putting it into this space, but it is not, not even close. In most RV fridge videos, you're gonna see that they recommend that you take that fan and hook it up to the fins and then just plug it into your light. But there, there is no light in this fan. So we're gonna have to find a different way to get this powered. I recently bought this off Amazon. You plug it into your car adapter, it gives you three more, plus some USBs, has an on off switch. And the best part is it has switches for each one of the car adapters. I've taken the time to label each one of the buttons here. One will power my TV, one for my LED lights, and one for the fridge fan. Another great feature is that it has the voltometer, so it lets you know what your battery's sitting at at all times. We're gonna use some double-sided tape, get this guy mounted up onto this wall, and that's gonna act as the activation switch for our fan. If you look on Amazon, you can find some pre-made ones for $50, $80, $90. $90. Here we have everything we're gonna use to build our own. Cost about $50. I'm really excited to get this guy installed. So let's go through everything we have here. We have our two fans that run at 3000 RPM. That's a crucial metric. You don't want to get fans that run at 1200 RPM, 1500, 3000 RPM is actually going to give you some force, some wind that's really going to circulate that air. This package came with two grill guards, a couple of brackets that actually connect these two guys together and mounting screws. We also got these guys here. These are alligator clips. I got them at Canadian Tire. They're usually used to test batteries, but today we're gonna to be using them as mounting brackets. These guys here are gonna go into the holes on the fan and then clip onto the fins in the fridge. We have two small connectors here that we'll be attaching to the wires in case you ever have to disconnect the fan or replace it. We're gonna use this epoxy to glue those clips right into the fans. Here I have a USB cable I bought off Amazon. Just a USB comes straight to these two wires and that's what's gonna power our fan system. I also have some white duct tape. This is what we're gonna to use to keep those wires out of the way and safe. Also have a pair of wire strippers and some wire shrink tubing. This is gonna be crucial to make sure that all the connections are safe and covered. And that's it. Let's get all these pieces put together and installed in the fridge. We're gonna be using all these components to put together a system to put into our Road Trek 190 fridge. But this system will also work with any fan in any RV, trailer, motorhome, or camper. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our fan assembly put together. We're gonna to start by taking out the two fans. And we're gonna to wanna to place the fans so that they're facing in the same direction, keeping these stickers facing the same way with the same orientation. Then we're gonna take the wires, bring them together, and bring them underneath both fans. Now we're gonna take one of the brackets, place that over top of both fans, line up the mounting holes here, and we're gonna use a couple of the included screws to fasten that together. Now these screws just dig into the plastic and self-thread. While you're doing this, be really mindful of the fan blades, not to bend, break, or disorientate them in any way. And our next screw. All right, now we're gonna place the other bracket on the bottom of the set. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that all the fan wires are tucked in neatly, and then you're gonna place that bracket over top of the wires locking them in. You wanna tighten them up so they're nice and snug, but not too much, because it's just plastic holding those threads. You don't wanna strip these. And now we have both fans mounted together just from the back. When the fan is on, the air will blow in this direction, so this face will be facing the grill. Our next step is gonna be placing the protective grills in the front of the fans. We're gonna use these screws to do the inside connections. And on the outside, we're actually gonna be putting through our clamps later on when we epoxy them in. So we're gonna be using four screws just on the middle seam here. While I'm putting this screw in, feel free to press the like button. And now the second grate goes on the same way. Screw goes through the grate, then through the mount, then into the fan. Perfect. Now we have those screws holding the grates and the mounts through the front here on these four. And on the back, we have just the screws going through the mounts, holding them together. Turns both fans into one solid unit. 
Next, we're gonna be using our alligator clips, which will be clipping onto the fans on the inside of the fridge and holding our fans in position. These guys gotta get epoxied into these mounting holes in the four corners. Now this side is what's gonna be facing the grills in the fridge. We wanna place these guys through the holder of the grill and then right into the fan mount itself. As they stand now, you can see they're not gonna fit in through there. But with the help of a pair of needle nose pliers, I'm gonna bend this guy to get these tips to move inward, hopefully create a shape that's gonna fit into that space. Now we're gonna take the front side of our fan assembly and we're gonna see if this guy fits in there. Nope, still tight. I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers and just slowly crimping this delicate metal here and trying to get it a little more narrow so that it might fit in. Now let's try it again. Oh, oh, there it is. The little bit of pressure, and that's perfect. Now, when you're putting these guys in, you wanna have the push on the outside of the fan. So when you place that in that tight space inside there, you're able just to get a couple fingers in, squeeze it, get it onto those fins, and it's gonna hold it in position. We're gonna mix up some epoxy, place that on our alligator clip, as well as some in the hole here in the fan mount. And we're gonna epoxy these guys into position, just like that. Something to be aware of is make sure you don't push this too far back as this is gonna block the operation of the clamp. You want it sticking outside so you have a clearance here where the hinge can function. All right, let's get all these guys bent and get that epoxy mixed up. So I'm just taking these back ends here and twisting them in. And then I'm just grabbing from the sides and really lightly, just bending it a little at a time and then trying it. Oh, perfect. Two down, two to go. Perfect. Get that last guy in there. Perfect. Beauty. And that's all of our clamps bent and fit. Now we're gonna mix up that epoxy and get these guys in there permanently. We're gonna combine the two parts of the epoxy to activate it, then we'll be able to use it to hold our alligator grips in. We'll make a little stir stick out of the packaging. We're ready to go. You wanna make sure your epoxy is really well mixed. It's gonna help with the adhesion. Now we're gonna take our fan, make sure the grill is facing forward as the airflow goes back that way. We're gonna take each one of our clips one at a time and like french fries and ketchup, we're just gonna dip it in there generously. Get our epoxy on there. And then we're gonna install each alligator clip into their designated holes here. Starting with number one. And again, when we're putting them in, make sure that handle is on the outside. Also, when you're putting in your clips, make sure that they're about the same depth each. You don't want one sticking out further than the other. That's gonna cause a tilt when we install the fan. And seeing as we're using epoxy, let's, uh, let's glove up here. And again, we're gonna take our next clamp, lots of epoxy, and we're gonna put a bit into the hole before we insert it. And there we go. And again, when you're doing this operation, be sure not to touch the fans or the fins. All right, and the last one here. So now we have all four alligator clamps in. They're all in the same orientation. All the handles are pointing outward and they're all lined up vertically. We're also double checking and making sure they're all sticking out about the same distance. Now we're gonna leave the fan set here to let that epoxy cure. And while that's curing, we're gonna take care of these wires. Once we're left with two twisted pigtails, we're gonna fold them over on themselves, which should leave us about a half inch piece. And again, we're gonna twist these guys together. Now we're gonna be placing our own plugs, these guys here. We're gonna be inserting them onto our wire and then crimping down on this connection. But before we do, we're gonna put a heat shrink tubing on each one. Red for the red. And a black for the black. Now that we got our heat shrink tubing on, we're ready to put on our connectors. 
And once we have our connector on, we're gonna come in with a set of vice grips or pliers. Really a crimper would be best, but we're working with what we got here. And you wanna make sure that that's properly crimped on the wire and the wire won't be pulled out. And we're gonna give that wire a good tug, make sure it's securely in there. And now we're ready to heat up our tube and shrink wrap it to the wire. To do this, you could use a heat gun or torch or a torch lighter. And now we're gonna repeat that process on the black wire. And that's our fan assembly, fully assembled and ready to be installed in the van. One last touch I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put a piece of tape and strap this wire to the frame, being careful not to obstruct the fan fins. So feeding that through the blade area, underneath the grill, and then just wrapping it over the wires there. And that way they won't get caught on anything. Now that we got the fan all completed, let's go test fit it in the fridge. And as we take a look inside, that fan fits perfectly. If you're doing this on a Road Trek 190, you're looking for a fan with a height of 120 millimeters or 12 centimeters. These fans are 12 volt and 0.6 amps, so they don't take much power at all. Now that we know this is gonna fit and work, we gotta work on this area. It's got our wiring set up. Now when it comes to these fans, there's many ways that you can power them. Some people will have lights in their RV fridge and they'll be able to hook it up to the power right before the switch for the light. But if you don't, you can get your power from these guys here. You can slide this drawer out and there's an access hole in the bottom. And then feeding that wire through, you can bring it around over and down. To get started, let's get this little power distribution center mounted to the wall here. I'm gonna place it high in the cabinet on the right side here. Another option you could do is get a cigarette lighter that has a USB port in the back, and then simply just plug it into this port when you want the fan on and just unplug it when you don't. Or you could put a disruption switch anywhere on the wire on its route. Me, I've chosen to use this guy here because it just seems to solve so many problems in the road truck. Myself, I decided to use this guy here because it just solves a bunch of problems that I'm having with powering on. No. So much easier to access, turn on, and keep a visual. No. God damn. I chose to use this one because it's so much easier. No. I chose to install this guy here. I chose to go with this cigarette lighter distributor because it gives you the switches for each individual. <laughs> I chose to use this device for it because it gives me independent switches for each one of the cigarette lighters. Also has the USB ports on it and it has a master on off switch can come in really handy. This also has a built in fuse, overheating protection and short circuit protection. Worth the investment at 35 bucks. So now I'm going to put on our double sided tape onto the back of the unit. You could also do this with Velcro straps. So we're going to put two full strips on here. And we're going to be very careful when we put this into position because I think we're, we're getting one shot at this. Making sure that's really on there. Good. Before I put this guy in position, we'll do a few dry fittings and just really make sure that's exactly where we want to have it. After I get this onto the wall, we're going to use some wire straps to clean all this stuff up. So now the wiring's nice and neat. We got this one fastened underneath here to the end. And now comes time when we're going to bring the wire into the fridge. So here you can see the seam of the door inside that in cove. When we open the door and put the wire through, you can see that there's a huge gap formed by that thick wire. We're gonna have to make that a lot thinner if we're gonna keep the cold in the fridge. When we do the same experiment using just the wires without the sheath on them, that's gonna allow the seal on the side of the fridge to close much more securely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that wire sheath at the point of entry to the fridge, just for when it crosses over that seam. Now, when we're looking to see how far down we wanna bring that wire, we're gonna look on the inside. We want that wire to come into the fridge at a point below this guy here, because if you bring the wire in and bring it along this wall or anywhere on top of this guy, it could obstruct the freezer door opening, or it might cause friction that might wear that down in time. So we wanna bring it down right around here. So we're gonna mark that spot on the outside and we're gonna get ready to strip that wire. 
So this is where I'm going to place my holder. The wire will bend in through here. I'm just going to take my wire strippers and break through this outer wire sheath very carefully, just so you get those two wires exposed. Then we're going to take an X-Acto knife. We're going to make a slit down one side very carefully and peel off that coating. Once we have the sheath off that wire, we're going to cut off that extra, and that's going to be the spot where we're going to enter it into the fridge. Then we're going to take that wire fastener, bring it down to the right height here, and we're going to lock that guy down. So now we can see that wire exposed is right where that seal is for the fridge door. We're going to tape this guy with some duct tape into position so that this sits right over top of that guy there. We're then going to take that same white duct tape and we're going to get this wire fed to the back to the fan. You could use some clips with double-sided tape on the back of them, but I think that taping this down with that white duct tape is going to keep it more out of the way and more protected. And now we got our wire fed through there and when we close the door, we've got a nice seal on the door. Now the one thing I should have did before I got to this stage was put the clips on the end of this wire so that we can plug it into the fan in there. Luckily this wire just makes it perfect length, wow. So let's get those plugs on these wires, get this fan plugged in and ready to go. So I put a strip of tape along the bottom of the fan just to cover up those wires, just to give them a little extra protection. Now I'm gonna get this guy clipped into its spot and plugged into its power. Last thing to do, get the duct tape and get this wire nice and secured along that sidewall. And there it is. Not the most beautiful thing in the world, but highly functional just like me. So we have our clips clipped onto the fins in there. I was trying to video me doing it, but there is no room. I had to move one fin over a quarter of an inch to get it in there, but it worked out really well. Fan runs pretty quiet for the amount of air it's moving. Really happy with this install. And now with a push of a button, I can turn that fan on and off. Love it. I could also turn on my LED lights and my TV. I still gotta install the TV. Now that we have our fan operational installed and looking great, there's one thing that this fridge still needs. A light. These are the ones I highly recommend. They're little puck lights. They have a motion sensor and light sensor. Got them off Amazon. They take three AAA batteries. I'm gonna stick this guy right over here. So every time you open the door, the light's gonna come on and stay on for about 15 to 20 seconds. And boom, you did it. Fans installed, light installed, cooler and brighter fridge. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope this motivated you to do the same or gave you some guidance in your next renovation journey. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one.